What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Triple H is in complete control of creative, Tony Khan has been told to stop, Logan Paul wants a rematch with Roman Reigns, talks between WWE and CM Punk are dead, has the war officially begun, a former WWE superstar is back in Impact, Carlito is officially on the roster and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive layers. Also check out our new website, WrestleLamia.com. And now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Now first story looks at Triple H is in complete control of creative. Now more evidence is coming in that Triple H is in complete control of WWE's creative department as Dave Meltzer is reporting in this week's Observer that regarding the creative process, right now Paul Levesque is the person in charge. He's the one making all the key decisions. Bruce Pritchard is a conduit between creative, talent relations and talent services. Ed Kosky is the operations person who keeps the scripts flowing. Now keep in mind that as long as Vince McMahon has a pulse, things can change. As Meltzer noted, at the moment, Vince McMahon is out of the creative process, but it was stressed to me the term at the moment. McMahon is still the person in charge of the company with the most power, but Levesque is running creative and Nick Khan is making the business moves. So far, this arrangement is working out to near perfection. While TKO holding stock has dropped significantly since Endeavor and the WWE merged, the WWE continues to thrive with robust ratings and ticket sales for live events. Next up, Logan Paul taking aim at the top. Logan Paul is currently on hiatus from WWE as he prepares for another boxing fight with Dylan Dennis, but expect big things when the Maverick returns. Paul recently chatted with Sports Illustrated's Justin Barrasso about his goals in WWE. While I'm boxing now, my ultimate sights are on some of WWE's champions. Roman Reigns has them. I'm gonna have to take them from him. While he had the chance to dethrone Roman at last year's Crown Jewel, his performance suggests he could earn a rematch. The 26-minute match was well received by fans and critics as Paul took Reigns to the limit. He said that he's still shocked at what happened. That's my proudest performance in WWE. It was my third match overall and only my second singles match. Triple H and the executives trusted me to go with the face of the organization and headlining an event at Saudi Arabia. I couldn't believe they trusted me in that position, but I was so excited to show them that I could do it. Although Reigns' schedule seems more limited than it was last year, a Paul vs Reigns rematch could be a major draw, especially in Saudi Arabia where the WWE books the biggest matches it can. The only downside to a rematch is trying to top the spectacular the two superstars put on Crown Jewel last year. Would you guys like to see a rematch between Logan and Roman? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Tony Khan has been told to stop. Does someone need to keep AEW president Tony Khan from using social media? Well, rumor has it there's a growing concern amongst some in AEW that Khan's recent comments criticizing Vince McMahon and Shawn Michaels were a bad look for him and more importantly for AEW. Now we mentioned several of Khan's fiery tweets and yet here's another that's drawing heat on him. This week, two active decade-long rating streaks from two great legends were ended. With all due respect, until this week's head-to-head -head, AEW on TBS vs WWE on USA, neither John Cena nor Undertaker had ever been on a WWE show with under 1 million total viewers and under 400k in the demo. A 5-4 Select recently reported on Khan's tweet about Cena and Taker, a tweet some interpreted as Tony claiming the 10th October Dynamite snapped Cena and Taker Street off the 1 million plus viewers. According to the patron site, we're told by several people within AEW that they were surprised that Tony Khan's tweet about Taker and John Cena drawing less than a million viewers ended up going out. From what we understand, Khan doesn't clear his tweets with AEW PR for those asking. Fightful states that those it spoke with didn't make a big deal out of Khan's tweets and some believe it was just him putting a good spin on Dynamite's less than stellar performance against NXT this week. However, not everyone is reporting this as Brian Alvarez commented on the Wrestling Observer Radio that I've heard that Tony needs to get off his phone and stop tweeting. You know who I heard that from? Not WWE. Well, yeah, from WWE too, but also from AEW. They're saying, will someone get this guy's phone from him? In addition, House of Wrestling is reporting that one source in WWE I spoke with described him as petulant, while others felt it was just a bad look. A source from CM Punk's camp responded by saying that this is the kind of stuff that makes him happy to be away from the company. What do you guys think of Tony Khan's anti-WWE tweets? Does he need to be stopped? Let us know in the comments down below. However, Tony Khan went on further and explained his tweets. Now, Khan's controversial comments on social media are ruffling some feathers, but Tony isn't backing down and he recently tweeted about why he's so vehement in his defense of AEW, including attacking critics. 
Not that I should be surprised, but the same WWE avatar accounts that spam me every day, no matter what I say or what it's about, now turning their wrath to my mom recovering from a near-death experience is why I straight hate these people to the bottom of my heart with all my soul. A Khan recently tweeted, This weekend marks one year since Mayo Clinic saved my mom's life. During her ordeal, many AEW talent came to me alleging WWE tampering, inducing them to break their contracts. I'll never forget these phone calls at the side of her in the hospital. It's when business became personal for me. The wrestling world is known for being a fiercely competitive business, especially when the competition is the WWE. However, it's Khan playing into the WWE's hands by taking these criticisms personally and allowing them to cloud his own judgement. I don't think it was WWE's fault that they had Tony Khan in that position and they were maybe tampering at that time. After all, business is business, right? But what's your take on things? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, this means war. At Tony Khan's tweets and other anti-WWE comments are definitely striking a nerve with WWE officials and if a new story from Dave Meltzer is accurate, Khan's criticisms are akin to a declaration of war. Those in WWE did contact us very quickly after the post with the idea that it was likely they saw it as a declaration of war by still discussing the subject. Of course, that declaration really dates back to January of 2019. Some critics have accused Tony Khan of being thin-skinned when it comes to complaints about AEW product or allegedly questioning business tactics by WWE. Others feel he's more justified in blasting the company and critics. Next up, a former WWE superstar back in wrestling. Add former WWE superstar Kozlov to the list of former superstars who are an impact. Kozlov returned during the 12th October impact, helping Dango win a match with big consequences. Cage side seats some things up, saying, Dango is competing against Jordan Grace, Champagne Singh, Eric Young and Jake something in a five-way bout to determine the number one and number 20 slots in the Qualia Shot Gauntlet at Bound for Glory on October 21st. Now, they could have given Kozlov some sort of music, right? Because it was dead silent when he came out. Maybe a lot of people don't remember him. But Kozlov now being called by his real name, Ole Prudis, showed up taking out Eric Young and Champagne Singh, which allowed Dirty Dango, aka former superstar fan Dango, to score the win. Kozlov stepped into the ring and celebrated with Dango, but there's no word on whether Olog is in an impact to wrestle or serve as a bodyguard, but he still looks intimidating and could make Dirty Dango into a legitimate threat. Next up, talks between WWE and CM Punk are said to be dead. Now, there have been many hints of CM Punk returning on WWE television, such as Shinsuke Nakamura hitting the GTS, not to mention Seth Rollins' promo. These have all have turned into talks of CM Punk returning at the Survivor Series, as it was believed to be talks between the two. However, Dave Meltzer noted that talks seem to be dead right now. It's Vince McMahon call and the others in charge are Levesque, Triple H and Nick Khan, but in the end, they're doing what Vince McMahon wants. It was strong enough that the company officials would be willing to say that they have no interest at this point and talks are dead right now. But I was also told not to close the door completely on it because it's wrestling. However, could this all just be a ruse? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, big things coming for WWE's international markets. It looks like plans are progressing for WWE's expansion of NXT into more international markets. The WWE recently shut down NXT UK in order to create a European brand of NXT. Although it's unknown when NXT Europe will launch, it's just the beginning of WWE's long-term plans. Meltzer recently reported, Paul Levesque said that with the merger complete, they're going to start developing the regional NXT territories, which is the idea before the pandemic and then ended up dropped. They said that NXT Europe would start in early 2023 and that didn't happen. But we do know that it's planned for the first territory in 2024. The idea is to have multiple regional groups with a television and a training center to train regional talent. The WWE success with international shows such as Clash at the Castle, Backlash, Money in the Bank and upcoming Elimination Chamber PLE in Australia suggests the WWE has a rich vein it can tap into. The only question for the WWE is will these expansions oversaturate those markets when demand is high for WWE wrestling but the supply is currently low? Next up, a former WWE star recovering from emergency surgery. A JV Boy Smith Jr. aka Harry Smith was recently rushed to hospital and had to undergo emergency surgery. The current MLW wrestler informed the fans on his Instagram, I want to inform everyone officially I needed to have emergency surgery last night for appendicitis and appendix removal to find out it was diverticulitis as well. I've had a part of my colon removed with some of my appendix as well for the procedure. Folks, this was one of the most painful experiences of my life, but I'm glad I got it done. Smith thanked the fans for their support and apologized in advance as he has to withdraw from his scheduled world title match against Alex Kane. The second gen superstar described the pain as a 12 out of 10. We send our best wishes to Harry Smith for a fast and full recovery. And finally, Carlito is officially on the roster. 
Last but not least, Carly 2 is back in WWE, but where will the second gen grappler be performing? Carly 2, who worked as a Latino World Order's mystery partner at Fastlane, is now listed at WWE.com as being part on the SmackDown roster. It's currently unknown whether he'll join the LWO, but fans may know as soon as tonight's SmackDown. But there you have it folks, the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.